Today we're going to be talking about thermal cameras again and we're going to take a look at this, the TP2 from Milesy, I think is how you pronounce it. Now this one is a bit different to the others, whilst it's designed to be used with smartphones like my iPhone or Android, it has a bit of an interesting feature and that is that it is wireless. Now in this video we're going to take a look at this, I'm going to give you an overview of its features and capabilities and then at the very end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Before we do that though I do need to be clear that Milesy did send me this camera over to review for free. They have not paid me to make this video, they've not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Now the TP2 is a bit different to a number of the thermal images that I've looked at on this channel in the past and that is because this one is wireless. Those other ones usually had either a USB-C port on the bottom or an Apple Lightning port whereas this one uses Wi-Fi. That means whilst it does work with Android and iOS it is completely agnostic which means you don't have to buy one specifically for your device. You just buy this unit and it will work with whichever one you have as long as you have the app installed. Now there are several different versions of the TP2 available, you've got the TP2 that I've got here which is the thermal imager and there's a TP2 Plus which has both the thermal and the standard camera installed as well but the one we're looking at today is the standard TP2. Now when we open it up inside you will find that it comes in this nice case. This holds the unit itself. Alongside this in the box, you will find some instructions for the unit as well. It did originally come in this little protective bag, which I'd already removed. Now, if we open this up, you will get to see the unit itself. It is much larger than those other thermal images, and that is because it has a built-in battery. If we take a look on the bottom, we've got a tripod mount. If we take a look on the side, there's a USB-C port for charging that battery there. Looking around it on the back, it's pretty flat, but you do have these little pieces here that flip up. And what these are for is putting in your mobile phone. So for instance, if I just give that a pull, you can see that will stretch out. So whilst it doesn't use a physical connection to your phone, you can actually connect it to your phone like that. It will still use the wireless link between the device and your phone, but you can have it as one unit just like some of the others. The nice thing about this though is that it isn't sticking off at the bottom like you see on some of the others. This one instead is mounted on the back, so it gives you a more traditional camera setup. Now looking around the unit, there really isn't a great deal else to show you. As I've said, we've got the USB-C port, we've got a tripod mount down the bottom there as well, and then on the front we've simply got our power button and our LEDs to give us our battery level. To turn it on, you simply press the power button release and then it will power on and then you're able to connect it to your phone. Now the specifications of the thermal imager on this camera are as follows. It has a resolution of 256 by 192. That is pretty much the same as everything that we have seen on the channel in the past. All of these thermal images are around that at this standard version. It features a pixel pitch of 12 micrometers, has a wavelength range of 7.5 to 40 micrometers and a frame rate of 25 hertz. It has a focal length of 3.2 millimeter and a lens aperture of 1.1. Now this one has a fixed focus lens. There is a version, I think they're calling it the Pro version that has a variable focus lens. I don't have that one here. This one is fixed focus. That means that you're not going to be able to get in up as close for electronic repair work as you might on some of the other ones. This one, the TP2 is really designed for standard thermal imaging. Looking at wiring, looking at boards. We'll take a look at that little bit more later on. What this isn't going to be ideal for though is board repair where you want to get in close. This the vision with the focus is the one that's going to allow you to do it. The minimum focal distance on this they're saying is 0.3 meters so you're going to need a bit of a gap 30 centimeters minimum to be able to get a good focus on the thermal imager. Now to get this to work you will need to download their app. I've done that on my phone already and I've got it powered on and you can now see it listed down here under the device list. You can see it is showing up as the TP2. So I can simply click connect, join the Wi-Fi network that the camera creates. So it has Bluetooth and it has a Wi-Fi network that it generates. And then after a couple of seconds it will connect and then we'll have that thermal image showing up there on the screen. There you go. You're currently looking there at the image above. If I just move my hand over it, yes, there's a little bit of latency, but that really isn't anything that's going to be a problem in the demonstration here. Now, if we move 
two turning it on its side and I'm going to pick it up and then look at myself with it first of all there you can see that thermal image as I'm talking you can see we've currently got it in that standard color palette mode so there you can see i've got it propped up that way i can walk you through the options on the screen now on the left side here you've got your options for temperature measurement so for instance we can add a spot which will allow us to measure the temperature in a specific point we can add a line so i can draw a line like that down there and it'll tell us what the hottest point in that there is we can add a box so I can do that there as well, which will give us the minimum, max and average temperatures within that box. And then I can click the little bin, which will get rid of them and clear it back to a normal screen. You can then see down here on the right hand side, we have all of the other options. So for instance, at the top, we've got the settings, which we'll take a look at in a second. We've got the shutter correction. We've got our color palettes. We've got the options down here for checking what we've recorded or taken images of. And then you've got the options down here for setting the kind of option that you want for tracking. So whether you want it to color track with a green one, red one, etc. for the different options. Now, if we go and take a look at the different color palette options, at the top you can see we have the grey color palette available there. We have the lava, which is one of my favorite ones. We have our iron one, again, another very, very good one. We've got our rainbow, another rainbow, so rainbow HC, rainbow. We've then got our black hot, our white hot, and that is all of the main colour palettes that are available. I'm going to go with the iron one here for a second. If we then go into this settings menu down the side here, you can see we have the option for setting it in metres or foot. We've got our temperature options, so Celsius. K or Fahrenheit. Then at the bottom, we've got our options for target distance, our emissivity, and the other options there. Now, if we want to go into the main settings option for this, there's a little cog up here at the top. And just to show you this, you've got features under here such as measurement range, you've got low temperature mode, which is minus 60 to plus 150. That's what most people are going to use. And then you've got the high temperature mode, 100 to 400 C, or you can set it to auto. You can set temp alarms. You've got your isotherm setting, you've got your auto power off, your factory reset, your battery and your device info. Now on the TP2 that I've got here, you only have the thermal imager. As a result of that, you don't have the option to do the combined real time and thermal imaging on the display. As a result of that, that does reduce the resolution that is available to you. You have that strict thermal resolution rather than having some of the improvements that you can have on the dual camera model that will allow you to do that sort of MSX feature that you get on FLIR cameras that allows you to improve the resolution as a result of it using both cameras. Now, what we're going to do next is give you a bit of a demo of how this camera works in real world. Okay, so here we are looking around the workshop. Now, as you can see, the resolution on the sensor on this, because it doesn't have the other camera as well to sort of offer that MSX style feature means you don't have the resolution that you will have on some of the others. There's no enhanced mode on this either. It is quite hot in here, so everything is roughly the same temperature in here at the moment, and that's why you're seeing everything sort of mold into one. It's not able to really give you a lot of definition in here because things have not been turned on or powered up. But we will take a look at a few more things in a second. Here, you can see I'm moving around to my camera. That's the camera I use for filming. So you can see that there very clearly. You can see the lens. You can see the cable coming out the side. Looking at my display, you can see the areas there, as well as my keyboard and things like that. So obviously, we there are temperature changes. The resolution then is able to show that. Looking there at my Rodecaster Pro 2. Here is my uh, solar inverter. This is the one I have here in the workshop. There is one of my lights that I use for filming. And next to it is a Pi. That's what I use for uploading data online for my thermal performance. So you can see there. If I change color palettes, you can see it a bit differently. It definitely seems to be focused at about six to 12 inches. As you come in there, we're about five, six inches away. And there, it really gives us an idea of how it looks. Looking at the cables underneath, you can see the heat sink on the back of the inverter. 
Here is the back of my digital camera. So again, this gives you an idea of what the resolution is like up close. And as we pull away from the camera, you can clearly see the buttons along the top, the areas that are hotter, the areas that are colder. This is a charger, a LiPo charger. Again, just giving you an indication of how it looks, moving down to the front where the connectors are. It does have a very nice image. It just does lack in resolution a little bit. And as a result of that, everything does tend to smoothly mold into itself. I've then taken it for a wander around the house. Here is my gas boiler. So you can very clearly see the hot pipework underneath. I think this camera is going to be a lot better for DIY than it is for sort of board repair and electronics. It's very good there at showing us that. We do have a power supply on the wall. That's a USB one, which is powering a security camera. Yes, I know. USB power for a security camera is not the most secure. Um, but yeah, you can clearly see that. Here we are looking at my main consumer unit in the house. There isn't actually a lot running through it at the moment, but you can see there the meter with the cable showing some temperature difference and then a bell transformer there next to it. Heading out into the street now just to show you what it's like on much larger things. So here you are looking at the street down with cars parked up and there you can see properties. It's quite empty this night actually. There wasn't a lot of people around starting to look at some cars that had recently been driven you can see there the thermal coming up over the bonnet there as well you can see clearly where the engine was started where the areas of heat were and if we move in closer you can see there that heat spread it around the wing and then we can there see it in the radiators behind the grill Now, just to show you it with people and animals, here is my boy. Just a quick look at it in a couple of different modes. At nighttime, obviously, it's going to be a lot better at looking at people. Um, but again, the way the focus is on this lens is not for long focal length views. Looking at the dog, you can clearly see him wandering around. What's always interesting is you can see the heat left on the floor where the paws were. It's amazing the footprint that is left behind thermally. But again, it gives you an indication of the kind of image, the kind of resolution that you can get. Getting up close, you can see again that focus looks a lot better when you get in nice and close. Now, taking a look at this PCB here, it'll give you an indication of what it's like for board repair. Because this doesn't have the manual focus, it is going to be limited. That isn't to say that you can't get in close. So if I just come out, it gives you an indication of the kind of view that you get and if i then go in closer you can then start to see things blur up very quickly it certainly could be used to indicate areas of heat so if we just flip this board over so we can have a look on the other side this will give us a view there of what it's like so we can see that i see there is getting hot but on this camera, it just doesn't have the resolution at this distance to be able to pinpoint that exactly. And if we wanted to get in closer, you can see everything just gets very, very blurry. What you can absolutely do is see that there is heat. It's just not going to allow us to pinpoint exactly what it is. Now, something you could use to try and make things a little bit easier to see on a board like this is the isotherm settings. There you can see I've adjusted it so the complete background now is showing as black because it's out of the temperature range. And now it's trying to indicate what is the hottest. Whilst you may not always be able to see what is the hottest, you can put the pinpoint on, which will give you an indication of the hotspot. So you can see that there, that it is bouncing around on that IC there to tell us that that is the hottest point. But again, it's going to be hard on this to pinpoint very specific components unless they are of a size of things like this IC here. Okay, now to share with you my thoughts on the TP2. Now, overall, I actually think this is a really interesting product. There are some stuff I really do like about it, but it isn't ideal for my personal use case here. What I really like is the fact that it's wireless. It is standalone, you can hold it, you can have your smartphone in one hand and the camera in another. 
That means it's agnostic. You can use it on Android, you can use it on iPhone. You don't have to buy the model specifically for your smartphone type. One of the issues I came across recently, in fact, with my Apple-based ones, the Lightning ones, is when I did upgrade my phone to the 15, and although I did end up sending that back, that now uses USB-C, which means I couldn't use those cameras with it. That wouldn't be a problem on this. Battery life seems good. Overall features and capability is on par with the others that I've tested out there. And I think its biggest benefit is the fact that it has a built-in battery. It's standalone. You can use it attached to your smartphone if you want to, but you can use it separately. What is not ideal on this for me is the fact that this one is a fixed focus lens. That means it's not ideal for board repair. That focus range means you can't get in up close and have a look at product components in detail, although they do make a version that does have a variable focus lens. This one doesn't have the second standard imaging camera either, so it is only thermal. And I will say that I think the thermal quality on this isn't quite as good as some of the others I've tested. It doesn't seem to have the enhanced modes that those others have. Um, overall, it has the same resolution as some of the cameras, but everything is just a little less refined, but that may be due to the sensor type compared to the others as well. It's not that it's a bad product, and I actually think this is really decent for DIY and things like that. You've seen it's really good at showing wiring, heat around units, heat around pipes and things like that. You can even see the studs on the wall with it too, which is good to see. It's just not as versatile as some of those other models with the variable focus lens. They do have the TP2+, Plus, which has the second imaging camera, and then there is a pro version that has that variable focus lens. I'd be really interested in checking out that pro version, actually, to see what that's like, especially for board repair. The fact I don't have to attach it to my camera is a real big bonus for me. Overall, I actually think it's a good product for DIY Maybe electricians, general thermal use, it's just not ideal for bench and board repair. Now, price-wise, depending on which version you choose, the TP2 Plus, which has the dual cameras, is available in the UK for £388.55. There is the standard version available for £310, or in dollars, it's £499 or so, as you saw it converting there. But there is 20% off available on a summer sale right now. Their website has all of the information with regards to the camera as well. You can see it's ideal here for working on vehicles. It's ideal for getting into tight places. I really do like that wireless functionality as I've already said that is the big difference between this camera and the ones that I've looked at in the past on the channel it's just giving you a lot more flexibility than you will have compared to say the ones that go into the USB port on the bottom now, if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. I want to say a big thank you to Marzi for sending this one over. I would love to check out the Pro Vision with the variable focus lens. That would be really cool to have a look at here on the channel. Now, before I wrap this one up, I just want to say if you have found this video interesting, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are also links to Patreon as well as Buy Me A Coffee in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it for me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.